Now, yes, I'm going to be, tell you a very personal story. Um, I came to the United States, I came to New York about 15 years ago. At that time, I had to make the adjustment. I was brought up by a very conservative mother, and her only wish for me was for me to get married by the age of 25. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, when that didn't happen, we went through a very long period of Cold War. <laughs> so that's the kind of family I came brought up with. And also, I was working in a Japanese company in Japan for about 10 years before I came here. So I was pretty much used to the things, how things were in Japan. And so when I came here, it was an adjustment for me. And my husband, who used to work for CNN at that time, he took me to his office and introduced me to his boss. I was shocked. One, his boss was a woman. And two, she was so pregnant. <laughs> I was like, and she, she said, oh, I'm doing due in a couple weeks. You don't see that in Japan. In a newsroom? No, you don't see that. My mind just exploded. <laughs> and at that point, I saw right in front of me the potential of my future career sitting right in front of me. And since then, she became my role model. And yes, the biggest challenging moment that I had during my career was my pregnancy. With that mindset, of course, I was scared to tell everybody that I was pregnant. I thought I was going to lose my career. Because when I tell my Japanese friends that I was pregnant, they would say, ah, oh, congratulations, so when are you leaving your company? Everybody says that. So having a boss who is an expatriate from Japan, I had to face him. Very nervous, but I had to, so I went to his office and I told him I was pregnant. Of course he goes, oh, congratulations, so when are you leaving? So I had to explain to him in the nicest, very nicest way possible. <laughs> if you don't mind, what I would like to do is stay until my last period of my pregnancy. And in, the, in that period, I'd like to do the things that I'm doing right now. Go on air and tell the news. And three months, I'll be back. And I'd like to start after three months from where I left. That is what I would like to do, if it's okay with you. And by the way, it's the law. <laughs> I mean, my boss was stunned. <laughs> but the good thing was that I had a very good relationship with my boss. So he listened. He said, give me a moment. He took a moment. Um, he probably did his uh, studies in law in this time. And he came back to me in a very short time. And he said, we'll work it out. And that was the most relieving voice I heard. And we worked it out. And you know what? It's not that difficult. At the end of the day, everybody won. It was great for the company because it was so much easier and cheaper for the company to keep me because I was experienced. And I got my way, the seamless career throughout my pregnancy, and that's what I wanted. I'm not saying it's good, but that's what I wanted. And I was able to do that. And that win-win relationship was so important for me because I did not want to be a burden for the company. That's not how I wanted to work. And I was not. And also, the win-win relationship is so important because that's the only way it can be sustainable. If you're a burden of the company, it's not going to last long. It has to be a sustainable win-win relationship. And of course, all these things can happen in Japan, too. And I think technically, it's not that difficult. There's a lot of highly edu educated women with a lot of potential in Japan who actually want that.
But the problem is all in the mindset, the mindset that I had when I came to America. That's stopping them. And how to change that? A role model. Everybody has to see for themselves that gender equality is possible and it's not that difficult and it benefits everybody. And if they see that, I don't think it's going to be that difficult, but they have to change that mindset.